the next session of Ember Software Testing. Uh, this is the 19th uh, lecture series of Ember Software Testing. In the, this is part two or unit two. Here we study about the white box uh, testing techniques. Uh, in the previous session, uh, we have understood about uh, some of the basics of uh, dynamic testing in terms of uh, white box and black box. Uh, so we need to have a strategy, test case selection methods and coverage criteria. These are uh, very important aspects for doing the white box and uh, black box testing. We also studied about uh, uh, the differences between the white box and the black box testing. Uh, basically, black box uh, is a functional or a data driven. It's purely based on the requirements, and uh, the design techniques are also based on the functional behavior of the system uh, without uh, any knowledge of the internal or implementation details of the system under the test. Similarly, in the white box testing, the implementation of the code will be studied and uh, Partially, the tester will have knowledge on the entire system, but his focus will be purely on the white box um, design techniques in terms of the uh, structure of the code. Also, there is an intermediate layer called a gray box. It can have a mixture of both white box and black box, where the coverage is not possible with the white box and uh, black box as well. So, we can have a credit of both of them that is called a gray box. And code coverage, we know total number of executed code that is tested divided by the total code that is there in the system. So, this is uh, called as code coverage in percentage. Similarly, requirements coverage we have. Uh, this talks about uh, the total number of tested requirement requirements versus uh, the total number of requirements in percentage. Also, we studied about uh, the black box testing and white box uh, testing. Uh, differences and their advantages and disadvantages as well. Okay, in continuation of that, today we study about uh, the coverage, the white box testing, what are the types of white box testing. So, the broad categories are uh, statement coverage, where all the executable statements uh, in the program, we need to <coughs> test it because uh, they will be executed. So uh, we need to see that they are going to be tested and uh, whether we are going to test it. So we need to have the test cases selected as per the same. The next one is a decision or a branch coverage. Here, test cases are chosen because because every branch it is called a, a branch also. The decision. So, the decision can lead into a true or false part. So, both have to be executed at least once. So, that is why it is called a decision coverage or the branch coverage. Similarly, we have a condition coverage. So, in this type of broad level coverage, we have test cases choosing to force each condition in a decision to take on all possible logic values. Suppose we have a multiple conditions available underneath the test. So, we need to exercise all the possible paths that the condition takes and if it could be a logic expression as well. So, we will study about that uh, condition coverage in detail uh, in the coming slides. Okay. So, all this together it is called as a structural coverage. So, this is a white box uh, testing technique on total, it is called as a structural coverage, which has a statement, decision, condition, modified condition, and there are different types of, uh, that are underneath this structural coverage. In the end of the structural coverage, we do a technique called structural coverage analysis. So, which is a method uh, which uh, does 
the coverage <coughs> credit and uh, how much your coverage is done and how much coverage is done so the end goal is to reach 100% so that is what the support analysis is all together it is called as a structural coverage uh, you can see a table uh, this is typically used in uh, uh, industry as part of the coverage is uh, concerned so you can see uh, different coverages on the bottom side uh, statement coverage decision coverage condition coverage condition decision coverage mcdc modified condition coverage and multiple condition coverage so what are these and uh, how these are covered in different uh, types of uh, uh, coverage criteria so every point of entry and exit in the program has been invoked at least once that means uh, we have uh, several uh, program units or the function units so that function will get entered and the function gets executed after the function is executed so whatever the possible ways of entering into that function or the procedure and what are the possible ways of exiting out of that function has to be invoked at least by that program that sort of a testing is done with the help of decision coverage condition coverage condition decision coverage mcdc and multiple condition coverage this these are responsible because there are the function could have a conditions or decisions modified conditions etc to make sure that all the entry and exit criteria have been taken care okay the next one is uh, the program will have uh, statements all the statements need to be touched once all the statements need to be invoked with the help of that testing method so this testing method is called statement coverage the next one is every decision in the program has taken all possible outcomes at least once that means we have a diamond blocks uh, decision box let me can draw it as it looks so we have a decision box we should be having a certain conditions so a decision can take as true or it can take as false this part can take as yes or no uh, yes true no false so likewise all the decisions uh, in terms of covering this this part this part so these decisions have to be invoked these decisions have to be covered so those type of testing are covered in the decision coverage condition decision coverage mcdc multiple condition coverage the next one is every condition in a decision in the program has taken all possible outcomes at least once that means the conditions that has come out in the decision should have uh, taken what are the possible outcomes that it yields so that will be taken in the condition coverage explicitly along with the condition decision because we know that decision is also there in all so the condition coverage uh, every condition in the decision in the program has taken all possible outcomes at least once it has to test the exercise the next one is every condition in the decision has been shown to an independently affect that decision's outcome that means that whatever the execution path that we have should be independently covered that means the three conditions that is required should be independent so that will be done with the help of mcdc this is a mcdc otherwise it is called as a modified conditions decision coverage decision condition uh, technique this is mostly used in um, aerospace and space industries uh, with the help of a standards called the bo173 i will uh, probably explain that aspect in detail uh, in the future slides this called as the bo173 standards basically 
and uh, this one along with the multiple conviction coverage, we have this uh, decision coverage criteria is uh, met. The last one is every combination of condition outcomes with the decision has been removed at least one. This is with the multiple condition coverage where the different several conditions because a program or the function could have uh, similar or different sort of uh, diamond boxes and processing statements all that parts have to be executed with a several combinations of them. So, that is done with the help of multiple condition coverage. So, this table, table talks about the coverage criteria what are the types of coverages we have. We will study each of them in detail. Okay. So, <coughs> white box testing has the below types of testing methods. The first one is being statement testing. And the next one is branch decision testing, the other one is data flow testing and uh, branch condition testing, we have a branch condition combination testing, we have modified condition testing and the last one is uh, linear code is sequence and jump testing, okay. Statement testing, the idea with the statement uh, coverage is to create enough test cases so that every statement in the source code has been executed at least once and uh, in branch decision testing the idea with decision coverage, this, the idea with the decision coverage is to execute every single decision in the code at least twice, it means we know that decision can be lead into a, a dual path true or false, so both possible outcomes of the decision should be executed in order to reach full decision coverage, that means the decision coverage is being taken care of branch or decision testing. The next one is the data flow testing, here what we do is the test cases are designed based on variables that are used within the code, basically purely this is based on the, uh, the, the data, so the data how it is represented with the help of variables. So, all those variables uh, have to be uh, considered in terms of their usage and the flow, uh, what are the values it takes. So, that is taken care with the help of data flow testing. The next one is branch condition, uh, branch condition testing, uh, a test case, this is a test case design technique in which test cases are designed to execute branch condition outcomes. The next one is a test case design technique in which test cases are designed to execute combination of branch condition outcomes, that means we have different combinations of the branches that is done with the help of branch, branch condition combination testing. The next one is the modified condition norm testing, here uh, in this design technique test cases are designed to execute branch conditions outcomes that independently affect the decision outcome, that means the independency of that decision will be taken or considered in this modified condition testing. The last one is linear code sequence and jump technique, in this uh, select test cases based on jump free sequence of code, that means some codes are like uh, interrupts and those things uh, run uh, independently, so this consists of uh, uh, about three type of uh, things executable statements, uh, the linear sequence uh, end of that it will be there and the target target line to which uh, control flow is transferred at the end of the linear sequence, that means we have the start of the sequence and the end of the sequence and the target line to which the control flow is transferred at the end of the line sequence. So, we will study in detail about this type of this and uh, the last one is uh, one more technique also we will study that is specifically followed in our uh, case uh, with the help of uh, D1 and D standard that is uh, MCDC. So, that also we can uh, consider basically that is having this modified condition decision coverage, that is nothing but the branch condition combination and modified condition uh, both together it is called, so we will study that uh, in detail.
Okay, statement coverage. So execute every statement in the code at least once during the test case execution. That means it's basically a, uh, a fundamental technique that every testing, it doesn't matter embedded, non-embedded, application, Java, whatever you call, all this type of testing, they use this statement coverage. Uh, in this statement coverage, test cases will be created so that every statement in the source code has been executed at least once. So that is the aim of this statement coverage. So basically, they use tools basically such as uh, white box uh, statement coverage testing tools, uh, LDRA, Vectorcast, Loadrunner, um, RTRT, a uh, lot of tools are there it's specific to the need of that uh, particular industry MBA software, they use this. And the coverage is, uh, as I said in the uh, earlier slide, earlier session, the coverage is uh, taken into credit with the help of executed uh, number of statements versus total number of statements. That means suppose uh, with the help of this uh, statement testing, the coverage uh, how we will arrive it, suppose uh, we have executed total number of lines 89 and the total number of statements that are there, here uh, statements are nothing but the lines of code, the executable lines of code. Uh, this excludes all the comments and everything. So in C, if you consider every semicolon is a executable lines of code. Also, it is called as EOC. So basically, this total number of statements uh, need to be executed in white box uh, statement coverage, but uh, it may not be possible to do 100%. So there are other methods that we will have to do it, uh, like uh, whatever that uh, methods that we have seen, like question coverage, modified condition coverage, and all that. Because every path needs to be executed by its own uh, technique. So, and the coverage is uh, done with the help of percentage. Here it is 89%. 89% is the statement coverage. So, the 11 percent is very good now. The 11 percent we need to take care. So the workflow when using the statement coverage is to first execute all existing black box test cases that has been created while monitoring the execution. That means uh, if we have done the black box requirements testing, we can uh, do that if possible with the help of white box and monitor what are the statements that have been executed. Then this monitoring is in all but the simplest uh, test cases performed with the tool support basically as I said. So when all black box or test cases have been executed, the tool can report which parts of the code that remain untested. That means we know that 11 percent is untested. So now we need to construct new test cases that will cover the <coughs> remaining statements as much as possible. So we will start with the part of the code that should be reached walk backward in the code to determine the values of the input variables required to reach the desired part of the code. Then accordingly we will provide the inputs, whatever the values, specific values that are required for the uh, lines of code that are not covered. So how we can feed the inputs is with the help of uh, specification whatever it is being spoken about the functionality or the variables if it is possible. And the expected results also can be drawn out of the specification. So this new test case also will be executed and monitored. And uh, one thing we should take care is we should not expect the result from the code itself. We should go by the specification and the functionality. So of course the code should complement. And not from code. So this is very important aspect. So we cannot uh, have because code can have a local variable or uncalculated values or intermediate values. So we may get biased or it may be half cooked. So better to go with the functionality for that uh, unit piece of program 
what is expected and accordingly we need to put the expected results and try to see whether it passes or fails. So that is about statement coverage. And uh, <coughs> as I said, all the statements uh, have to be monitored and executed and tracked. So what will happen is this monitoring technique or what is that called uh, um, observation we want to have on the executable statements it is not possible with the help of manual if it is uh, say some 10 20 lines ok we can do it but the, there are uh, big big embedded programs having 50,000 lines of code so what will you do? It's not uh, <coughs> it's impossible to have a manual inspection of that. So, what we need to have there are uh, test hooks that can be used. Something like a printf, we can add to see that every statement is executed. The printf will print. Suppose printf statement number executed. Something like this. Statement number. And every lines of code we can have this statement number implemented accordingly. We know that what is that being printed. And if there is a missing thing, so we know that how many statements have been missed. But the problem is here we cannot have printf done by ourselves every time. So that is why we have a hands on to cover this we have a tool called instrumentation this is called this technique is called instrumentation instrumentation what do we do is we will provide the monitoring ways of observing how many statements have been executed or what are the statements that are missed. So that report will be done with the help of instrumentation where the existing lines of code or the code the program will be instrumented in such a way that the tested part will be reported. So for this instrumentation there are a lot of tools we will study about the tools uh, the tools so what it does is basically we will feed all the source files and uh, it will add the instrumentation code into that and execute on the uh, target of the host depending on the nature of the embedded system. There are other challenges that I will speak about that where uh, we add instrumentation and it will add lot of lines of code and the total lines of code will increase for 50k LOC we have and the instrumentation is suppose on the 20k it will become 70k and which may not fit into the target system. So what we can do in that case is we can do a partial instrumentation and take the credit by overlapping uh, all of them. So that is how the instrumentation of statement testing is done. Okay, software instrumentation, software only measurement methods are all based on some form of execution logging. That means the logging of the execution or the monitoring of the execution is required to do the statement coverage okay. the implication is that uh, after the black box uh, sorry after the block is entered every statement in the block is executed by placing a simple trace statement such as printer at the beginning of every basic block we can track when the block and by implication all the statements in the block are executed this is what I explained so if it is the altos the altos itself will provide a Logging service with the help of we can do it, but not all embedded systems will have an altos or a facility with altos to trace it uh, in terms of uh, the logging the <coughs> calls or memory in the target system. So, we will use the instrumentation technique with the help of the tools, external tools. So, less intrusive form of execution logging might be called low intrusion printf because it does not. Uh, Intrudes much into the 
existing program. A simple memory write is used in the place of printf. At each basic block entry point, the logging function marks a unique spot in the access data memory. After the tests are complete, the external software correlates these marks to the appropriate sections of the code, so that the code, whether it is used or not used, will come to know based on the memory uh, aspects. Alternatively, the same kind of logging call can write to a single memory cell, and the logic analyzer is another tool, as I said, for instrumentation and uh, statement coverage, they use it. Uh, it could be a hardware uh, interface uh, such as a logic analyzer which will capture the data from the memory and analyzed. So that is how the software instrument is done. And uh, the challenging part of the interesting part is that if the system being tested is ROM based and the ROM capacity is close to the limo, the instrumented code image might not fit. As I said, if there is a 50,000 lines of code is there and the instrumentation uh, after we are done with that it could come to something like a 70, 75k and whereas the embedded system has a memory of 75k definitely it is in the border or it may creep more than that. So what we can do is we can improve your statement coverage by using two or more rigorous coverage techniques uh, sorry uh, we can improve that by the help of overlapping technique and uh, statements we can reduce it uh, partially and uh, the further testing or the statement coverage we can use with the help of decision coverage and MCDC modified condition decision coverage. So that is how the software instrumentation is done, there are various tools, uh, we will touch base uh, some of the tools as an example at the end of this session or in the next session. Okay. In going in deep, going in detail of the statement coverage, you can see uh, there is an example provided here. Uh, to achieve statement coverage, every executable statement in the program is removed. This once during the software testing, we know that achieving statement coverage shows that all code statements are reachable. In the context of D1 standard B, reachable based on test cases prior to the requirement. Here uh, they use either a design or the requirements to have that reachability aspects. Uh, that is what is spoken in the D1 standard B process, which is standard. So, for example, if x is greater than 1 and y equal to 0, then z will become z by x and if. So, this is one statement. So, by choosing x equal to 2, y equal to 0 and z equal to 4 as input to this code segment, every statement is executed at least one, we know that there are two statements, this statements, two, two statements how we can to execute is by providing such values, so it will enter into that uh, then portion only when if x is greater than 1, here we have chosen x as 2, so definitely it will go inside this, but there is one more condition called and condition, so this logic expression we need to satisfy by putting y at the y as 0, so when so y becomes 0 and x is greater than 1, that is 2, so z will become z by x and z is provided as 4. So that will become 4 by <coughs> 2 is 2. However, if an R is coded by mistake in the first statement instead of an AND, the test case will not detect a problem. That means we will not be able to detect the issue that is here because the implementation is wrong. So this is some of some sort of a uh, it goes purely by the test case selection and the Code understanding. If the code is wrong, then it may be difficult. So, as per uh, one uh, embedded software uh, uh, expert Mayer's statement coverage criteria is so weak that it generally, generally considered as useless. So, at best, statement coverage should be considered a minimal requirement. That means, a sort of statement coverage we need to do to have a confidence that the maximum 
statements have been reached or statements have been invoked. So, in that way, uh, basically, we can use this use this statement coverage technique, and rest of them we use the other techniques. Uh, further elaboration of the statement coverage, you can see. Uh, there are about five statements in this program. Here is a uh, program block within the flower bracket. So we have uh, multiple blocks in terms of small uh, flower brackets. Uh, first two two statements are executed first. Then there is a condition. If the condition is uh, fine, then statement three and four are executed. If the condition is not good, then statement five is executed. There are total five statements that have to be exercised. In this program, how are we going to do it? So, because the statement coverage, we need to make sure that five statements are invoked at least once. So, we need to make sure that the condition we are going to provide such a way that the condition can take both no as well as yes with those values. So, by statement coverage going plainly, we definitely we are going to cover first two statements and. Uh, the second part, it will uh, based on the result of the two statements, statement one or two, it could be, it will go either as yes path or no path. So, either case, we will execute only three statements or four statements. One of these will be exercised. So, with this statement coverage approach, at best, we can achieve. Either three with the no path or four with yes. Statements are Exercised. So, statement coverage can do this much because the conditions it won't care. So, that is how this has been done with the help of five statements with the conditions that are underneath this. Okay. When creating test cases for statement coverage, you can move to the control flow graph. So, control flow graph is something like uh, how the flow is going to happen. The statement coverage requires statements in the code to be executed. We know that the boxes and the diamonds represent all the statements in the code. So that is also part of the statements. So that uh, that also will be reached with the help of statement coverage. By following the paths through the code, we cover all the diamonds and all the boxes are covered and thus we have statement coverage. According to the relation with Maccabe, it's a Maccabe is a uh, person's name, but he found out or he discovered this standard to measure the complexity of the program based on all these diamonds and processing statement. So, according to the relation with the Makeaway measure, Makeaway measure it is called, there should be three or less test cases, and in this case, two are enough. So, to have two paths, what I said is we need to have two test cases. The first test case will Take care of statement one, two, and five. The second test case will take care of statement one, two, and three and four. So two test cases are enough with this measure. How much of the total executable statements have been hit covered by the various test case scenarios is what is important in terms of statement coverage. For a deceived statement, both true and false conditions should be tested, even if the decision statement is of implicit form. If though it is internal, that means it depends on the uh, some of the internal uh, not the external one that needs to be exercised still. In the given piece of code block, if condition is false, then three out of four statements are said to be covered. So we know that statement one, statement two, statement three, sorry, statement five have been exercised if there is a false condition exists or no condition exists. To achieve 100 percent decision coverage. Both true and false conditions have to be achieved in two different test scenarios, even though the statement is of implicit form. So, the second form is 
we need to have another statement coverage with the path taking as yes or true with the help of that statement one two and three four have been exercised. So in the first form we have exercised the first one and in the second one we have exercised the true path. false or no whatever you want to call so that is all the statement coverage in terms of uh, total number of executable statements for each will be done ok so that is what is about statement coverage all the executable statements have to be reached Uh, next type of uh, white box testing is on the branch testing or the decision coverage or decision testing it is called. So, how are we going to do? Let us see. ok. So, here uh, we create test cases so that each decision in the code executes with both true and false outcomes. So, basically two test cases. So, we take that simple example only. So, we have exercised the statement coverage in two techniques. Similarly, for decision or branch coverage testing what we do is for true false conditions uh, we will have it. So, we use a uh, tools as well for this uh, it is called instrument decision tool where decisions have been taken care. And here also so the coverage aspects uh, are uh, done with the help of a percentage whereas total number of executed decision outcomes have been considered that means total number of decisions how many are there against total number of executed decisions that means suppose we have covered suppose two diamonds and each diamond will have two outcomes true false true false then there are four because 2 into total number of decisions because each decision will have a two outcomes either a true or false. So, one diamond if you have exercised or one two diamonds with one outcome we have exercised it means the path is true. So, the coverage is 50 percent. So, this also can be done with the help of a tool. So, both are called same basically branch coverage or decision coverage. So, it is a technique similar to statement coverage. So, the idea with the decision coverage is to ex execute every decision single decision in the code at least twice it is not once that we have to remember. Every decision in the code have to be exercised twice. In statement coverage, only once is enough. Here, twice because the decision will take two parts. That is why we need to have this criteria very important. So, both possible outcomes of the decision is true and false should be executed in order to reach the decision coverage. By the first glance statement and decision coverage seem to yield exactly the same test cases, but executing every decision with both the true and false outcomes will result in all segments being executed. So, in order to execute all segments all outcomes of every decision needs to be executed that is true and false. Uh, 
so but there is a one case in which statement coverage can be reached without having full decision coverage and that is uh, with an if statement without an else clause so in that case we will not have false conditions so, but that is not a good programming practice uh, to have a if something do statement if some condition statement and there is no else so in this case only one way it is possible but it is not a good practice to have one if without else so else have to be there else do some state some other statement some other execution path so definitely we are going to have a multiple paths for true as well as false so obviously we still need a second test case uh, with a false outcome to reach the decision coverage so coverage is measured by dividing the total number uh, executed decision outcomes by the total number of decision times multiplied by two so and the tools that are used in this also same tools for monitoring the coverage where addition coverage is taken care as well as the statement criteria has been met so that is with that basically and further decision coverage requires a two test cases one for true outcome and one for false outcome for simple decisions that is decisions with a single condition decision coverage ensures complete testing and control constructs for a decision a or b test cases true false and false false will toggle the decision outcomes between true and false so we have reached that however the effect of b is not tested right so that is those test cases cannot distinguish between the decision a or b and the decision a so the analysis should confirm the degree of structural coverage appropriate to the software level whatever the level of the software that is depending on that the analysis should confirm basically whether a has an effect or not for a decision statement both true and false condition should be tested even if the decision statement is of implicit form if condition is true then one of two decisions have been covered to achieve 100% decision coverage both true and false conditions have to be achieved in two different scenarios even the statement is implicit form <coughs> okay so here uh, the same example we see here statement 1 to the condition yes will take into statement 3 and 4 and uh, the condition no will take into statement 5 so two conditions are to be covered true and false or yes or no decision coverage is uh, with the help of a percentage executed decision outcomes here only one decision outcome is there divided by total number of decisions that is 1 into 2 2 so there are Two in the denominator and two in the numerator. That will make 100% decision coverage. So that is about decision coverage. Next one we will see another technique called data flow testing. Here also the data flow testing uses the control flow graph control flow graph is we know that it's a basic control of the program how it is going to execute with the structure of the program so data flow testing uses the control flow graph to explore the unreasonable things that can happen to data that means basically we use the data in terms of controlling the flow consideration of data flow anomaly leads to test path selection strategies that fill the gaps between complete path testing and branch or statement testing that means uh, we test using the control flow all the statement and decision and everything but sometimes what will happen is purely the flow is based on the data for certain cases so there are gaps 
by doing that selection criteria uh, with the help of path testing and the branch of statement testing. So, in that case, data flow in testing is useful. Data flow testing is the name given to a family of test strategies based on selecting paths through the program's control flow in order to explore sequences of events related to the status of data objects. We know that data flow testing is one of the data flow objects where data is the key here. Data could be a variable. Example pick enough paths to assure that every data object has been initialized prior to its use. All defined objects have been used at least once. So, how data flow testing is going to Example is that the variables or the data that are used should be initialized because there is a requirement that the initialization function will take care of the global variables. System gets initialized. Upon power up. So, what will happen is the system gets initialized. So, all the variables and the data that are part of the initialization function, init function, will get initialized. So, how do we do is with the help of a data flow whether that initialization is done for each of the intended data, it could be a variable. Or anything. So, what will happen is that init function, whatever the where 1, where 2, we have initialized to 0. So, initialized it does not mean that it could be 0, it could be any value that is used as an init value and throughout the entire program. So, this is very important because the data flow, if instead of 1, if I put as 0, it could fail because where 3 is being initialized and that initial value in static uh, increment in the other program may do it so that the increment will happen if it is initialized with 1 as 2, 3, 4, if it is initialized with 0 the increment will go wrong. Similarly, if the variable, variable 1 and 2 are initialized to some other value than 0, the program can collapse. So, that is why it is very important to have <coughs> Data flow testing along with other type of uh, testing techniques. <coughs> the next one is this is also very important whatever the data or the objects that are defined should be used. It is very important because we cannot have a data that is dead, it is called a data object which is not used. Also called as dead object. So, this is very important we cannot have because unnecessarily it will uh, occupy the memory without the need and sometimes it may so happen that there are other functions that could use the same name as the one that is there here in other program which is unused will result in some sort of a anomalies in the program. So, better to avoid this type of things and this will be done with the help of data flow testing. And further uh, the data type uh, objects are defined in the data flow testing. So, type D type of uh, data or the objects are of the types having defined created and initialized types, K type is killed undefined and or released ones, mostly this is used in uh, application uh, embedded applications or C++ based applications. U type of data object is used type, so used in the calculation or used in the predict type. An object that is a variable is defined when it appears in a data declaration or it has any any value or file that has been opened, is dynamically allocated etcetera. So, the all those are called as an object. So, there is a definitely a requirement for this and against that objective of that particular variable or the object as for the definition we need to test it. So, an object is used is called as used when it is part of a computation or a predicate. So, you can see C or P type 
P is for calculation, P is for predicate. <coughs> a variable is used for a computation when it appears on the right hand side. That means the variable is used uh, when it is used for comparison or assignment, etc. Some sort of a computation that is called as a C type. Use the object data object type. Sometimes even uh, the left hand side. Uh, in case of array indices also will be used of an assignment statement. This is for section for your understanding RHSC right hand side HSCs. Okay. So accordingly the variables are computed. So variable is used in a predicate when it appears directly in that predicate that means variable can be used as a predicate by itself. That means the variable can be compared directly uh, something like if where A is something then take some conditions or decisions and that where is getting updated with some sort of a signals or whatever it is. So those are all called predicator variables where there is no assignment or RHS LHS type of a usages are done with the help of that variables. Okay. So next one is uh, examples of uh, data flow testing uh, data object types you can see it's definition C use P use as I said definition is defined created and changed the other one is C use and P use. For calculations, we use a C type of objects. For a predicate, we use P type of objects. This is a small example program. Read x y z equals x plus two. If there is a condition, so so so. So this is a printf statement. And uh, how are we going to segregate the different types of data objects here? So x y and uh, x and y are defined <coughs> with the help of read statement. Read function rather, Z is also a defined one, W is another one, Y is another one. C use a computation use because X is used for computation. You can see on the right hand side, also we have a Z, also we have a Y, we have a W, Z, etc. Because print is used, print we are supplied as a four parameters, that is why it is C use. For P use, we see we use a the predicate directly where z is less than y is used as a predicate for uh, doing some if uh, condition that is why it is called as we use uh, variables data object types. So all these need to be verified in data flow testing. So data are as important as code because uh, having the implementation along with the data is as important to flow the program and define what you consider to be a data flow anomaly. I mean you understand the program flow and the data that is used within the program and that definition we need to consider in terms of any anomaly how it is being used what again is to what is being spoken in the requirement. So data flow testing strategies span the gap between all the parts and the branch testing. So it is not just enough to have a just branch testing by supplying Z and Y values and uh, make sure that the path 4 is done 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, one path is here. In this uh, decision uh, testing what we do is Parts 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6 are done. In the other type of addition testing, with the else part executed, what we do is 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. This path is executed. Still, we would have missed if the variable is been assigned wrongly or Z is supposed to have X plus 2, and the specification says that. Should be x minus two, and we have missed it. So we believe that 
whatever the statement is available before the decision testing is been tested properly. So it is very important to have a data flow testing also. So how do we do? By having all the parts exercised with the focus on the data. So there is a gap between the part and the branch testing is what data flow testing takes care of. Okay, so, so we have studied about uh, statement testing where all the statements uh, have to be executed and invoked and in branch or uh, decision testing we have seen every diamonds or the crossing blocks with the conditions or the uh, decisions sorry it's not conditions branches will be tested and data flow testing we do the data or the objects of different types will be tested. And uh, in the next session we will study about the branch condition testing, branch condition uh, formulation testing, modified uh, condition testing and the last type is LC, LCAG testing and uh, we will touch base on the B1 synergy also. Okay. So some of the embed system testing words we will go through. Uh, what we have added today is a branch, condition, decision, data flow. So along with other words, we list out for each session how many embed system jargons or words we use it. Of course, there is a glossary. We have added uh, some more uh, glossary in the code, um, such as little matrix, logical test case, level test, master test plan. MIL model in the book, mixer signals, model based development, MBD, output quality, uh, example ISO 8402 standards, quality assurance, quality characteristics. So, we will add likewise each uh, session some of the glossaries that we need to understand in embed system uh, testing. So with that, uh, we'll end this today's session, and uh, the next session we'll continue on the box testing other techniques.